Okay, we have this integral, which is a trig substitution integral. It's in disguise because the 25 minus x squared is raised to the 3 halves power, but um, it's a trig sub. Um, trig sub is usually triggered by having one of the following three square roots in your problem. The square root of a squared minus x squared. A is just any number. If that's the case, you let x equal a sine theta. And there's two others. Um, flip it around, x squared minus a squared. You would let a equal, uh, x equal a sec theta. And then if it's a plus in between, you would let x equal a tan theta. So um, we have to basically recast the 3 halves power as a square root. And then, um, so it's going to be the square root of that 25 minus x squared then cubed. That's what 3 halves power is. And so to which one of these guys do we have? We have a, a, a constant squared minus a x squared. So we have the first one, a squared minus x squared where a is a five, the, the number that you take um, to square to get the 25. So that means that we should let x equal five sine theta. Okay, by doing that, we then have to substitute, replace parts of the integral. Um, there are only two parts that we have to replace, the dx from the numerator and the three halves power, um, um, 25 minus x squared, um, square root cube, you know, that guy. Well, dx is the derivative. Like when you do a u sub, you let u equal blah, and you do du. If you let x equal 5 sine theta, you do dx, the derivative of 5 sine theta, 5 cosine theta, officially d theta. Now, when you have the radical uh, that triggers the trig sub, um, each radical can quickly be known and replaced. Um, we're skipping some algebra, but basically um, when you do the x equal a sine theta, the radical becomes a cosine theta. When you do the, uh, the middle one there, x equal a sec theta, the radical becomes a tan theta. And when you do let x equal a tan theta, the radical that triggered it becomes a sec theta. Uh, basically what's going on there is there's some, some trick going uh, I can show you quickly. Um, we have uh, basically replacing x with a sine theta. We have uh, a squared sine squared theta. And if you factor out the a squared, you'll have uh, a squared times 1 minus sine squared. And that's cosine squared. And that's all underneath a radical. And so that's how you end up with a cosine theta. Okay, and they all work like that. So our radical becomes five cosine theta, but then that gets cubed because we, we have three halves power. So you keep, don't forget to cube the five. You cube the cosine, of course, but don't forget to cube the five. So dx is our numerator, five cosine theta, and um, the radical is our denominator. And don't forget there's 100 in the problem as well. Okay, all right, let's put this off to the side here. Here we go. Plug these guys in. 100 times the dx, and then the denominator, 125 times cosine cubed. Okay, great. Well, do some canceling. The cosine theta from the numerator can cancel with one of those three guys from the denominator, giving us two more still there. And five times 100 is 500. And 125 goes into 500 four times. So you have a 4 in the numerator and a cosine squared in the denominator and the d theta, of course. Now, we don't know the antiderivative right away. We can't do a u sub because we're missing cosine derivative, sine theta. So um, the next thing, usually, I mean, you try to go to sines and cosines, but you're already in sines and cosines. But um, here we're going to go out of sine and cosine here. Um, cosine, a uh, 1 over cosine, it, I know it's squared, but um, is, is secant. And so you can bring that up as a secant squared. And why is that beneficial? Because you know the antiderivative of secant squared. You know what function has secant squared as its derivative? It's tangent. 
And so that allows us to be able to then be done with the integral, but we're in theta, okay? Now we have an option, there's a fork in the road here. We could do a limit switch, or we could do a reference triangle. Let me briefly tell you why the limit switch is bad. Um, in this particular example, um, you go back to your tricks up, and you plug in your bounds. And it's the upper bound that gives you trouble. Three is equal to five sine theta. It's your job to figure out the theta. And this will not give you one of your unit circle 30, 45, 60 multiple guys. You'll take, divide by five, and your job is to figure out, you know, what angle when plugged into sine is three fifths. It's not one of our standard guys. So technically, the theta there is the arc sine of three fifths. Now you can work with that if you're good with arc sine and taking the cosine, taking the tangent of the arc sine, you know. But but anyway. Otherwise, uh, your job would then be to, uh, to do the reference triangle. Let me walk you through that. So the reference triangle is going back to the trig sub, to solving for the trig function, and representing that as, you know, opposite over hypotenuse for sine. So make yourself a triangle, right triangle, that has a base angle theta, and its opposite is x, and its hypotenuse is 5. So the x is the upright leg, 5 is the hypotenuse, and then the radical that got this thing started, not the 3 halves, but the actual square root, um, 25 minus x squared is the missing side. Or you can just use Pythagorean theorem to find that. It's our job to replace tan theta, who's opposite over adjacent, so x on top of rad, 25 minus x squared, will be the replacement to tan theta. And so, don't forget we have four times that though. So our antiderivative is 4x on top of rad, five, 25 minus x squared. Our original integral is equal to that. The antiderivative is that guy. Now, fundamental theorem of calculus, plug a 3 in, plug a 0 in. But thankfully, plugging a 0 in gives us 0. Plugging a 3 in gives us 12 over the square root of 16. That's 4, 12 fourths. So the answer is 3. We did it. Good job.